Bonjour tout le monde. Hello everybody. I'm very, very happy today to have such a wonderful guest for, I hope, a wonderful interview. Uh, she's a geoscientist, she's a cell biologist, and in my little brain it's a bit confusing how come this could be worked together. So, Emma Humarlund, if you could introduce yourself to the audience, per favor. Yes. <laughs> yes. Sure, you're absolutely right. It's a good question. How can I combine this? But it's true that my background is within uh, biology and geology, actually. And right now I'm in the same cancer lab as you are. And the reason for that is um, that I'm curious about the rise of multicellular organisms on Earth. And as you can see, I have Mars in the background, background. where it has not happened. Mm -hmm. It has not happened to have big life. And we all, I think we all wonder sooner or later where we come from. And it's actually the case that we do not know why we have animals on Earth. We don't know why we got microbial life so early in Earth history. And we don't know why we got large life, which also happened very late. So those two are million dollar questions in the sort of Earth history field. And I have focused particularly on the on the other one, why we have why we have large life, why it happened very dramatically when it did happen, and for that, one of the sources of information is rocks, because when you want information for from Earth's history, all we have left are rocks, and some of the sedimentary rocks like the sands and the shales, as in the background, they record chemistry and and evolution in, in, in different ways. They, they kind of record clues, indirect clues. Okay, yeah. And we need, to do, we need to decipher those to get the idea of the past, but, but to study it in, in the present, I think then you can go to developmental biology, of course, and look at embryos developing and what organisms need. But I actually think that tumors are also a very good model system to understand the transition from one cell to many cells and why it happens uh, what is needed to make it happen and of course cancer is extremely successful at doing this it's a form of multicellularity that is ugly and we don't want it we hate it but it's extremely successful at doing this and it's it keeps on being successful at this transition so for my own original question, I think it's a very useful system to understand what multicellularity needs. But I also think the cancer field might benefit from looking at cancer through an evolutionary lens, that it actually has, has anchoring in history. You know, it's been millions and billions of years to build up the, 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 the luggage or the baggage that cancer is exploiting. So I think from, from that perspective, we might even have another possibility to, to target cancer. If we find like the Achilles heel of how its multicellularity is formed. Because from an evolutionary perspective, it's actually quite difficult to get big. But, uh, but why that is, we don't know. Yeah, so at the end, if I understood well, you see somehow kind of a similarity between how um, from a single cell we have a, a, a such a, a, a multicellular organism and a different, I mean, different multicellular organism, and you see similarity between single cell to such a different kind of a cancer. So this is what you, you see. And in a certain moment, I, I, I thought that you will uh, be more enthusiastic about how it happened, but then you said it will help us to understand, or it will help us to, to fight against cancer. Yes. So, I think so. yeah. So, uh, I mean, which kind of uh, strategy you, you, you th I mean, uh, because now I'm blocked actually. So, no. <laughs> how would that happen? Yeah, it's quite. I, th I think maybe to start with, it's a philosophical contribution to, for example, 
um, highlight to the cancer field that it might not only be about mutations and, and DNA in that sense, because we can see that the transition from unicellular organisms to animals is not about DNA and genes. It's about other things that we don't really know what they are yet, but something in the coordination of, of uh, variability and, of course, genetic, genetic uh, potential to build phenotypes, something in Something in it's something else than just adding on Lego. Yeah, I used to usually have these Lego. You know, it's it's not just about putting on another. It's something else that makes the transition from from one cell to mm. to this more complex. Yeah. And this would be an intermediate. And I actually have the more you know the vertebrate. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 a different yeah. color, and I think it's. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't want to show it properly. <laughs> but but. but um, um, so that would be my contribution in the first phase mm. to just highlight that from an Earth history perspective, it's difficult to make multicellularity, and we can figure if we can figure out what those essential components are, we can also maybe use that to find the Achilles heel of yeah. tumors, and it's probably also other uh, doors to the tumor formation than the one that the cancer field is focusing, focusing on so much today. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's, it's maybe an intimist question then. So you uh, told me that you start with uh, geoscience, with rocks, and you, 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 you come to uh, cell biology uh, later on. So, is there any particular reason for that? Do you, yeah. you uh, have any uh, secret love for this kind of uh, jobs? Do you, how Emma uh, came to uh, do this kind of job? I mean, that's, a, that's a very good question. I, I wish I could say the reason was, or I can, I can honestly say that uh, the driver behind that switch mm. is probably because I, I I'm so curious about the answer. So I want to I can take I can you know walk over any discipline or 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 boundary to get more answers. I think that's that's part of uh, the drive. Mm. But I I wish I could say that the actual shift had to do with you know, throwing away one hypothesis for the other, because that was also part of it, but it wasn't actually why I started looking for a collaborator within the cancer field, because that was more anger, because I saw from my, from my previous field that the debates were very fierce and kind of aggressive on who has the evidence for high oxygen when animals diversified. And I didn't feel that we were getting anywhere. And I also felt excluded for mm -hmm. saying this, we don't see it, you know. I also did this analysis with geochemistry and we, we don't see any change in oxygen when animals evolve. It's quite low actually. And I felt excluded for not being part of the inner circle. See? So one of the re personal reactions to that, to that was, you know, I'll show you I that I can. So, so that was one of that was actually the reason for me to start looking for a professor that worked in the cancer field mm. that was also interested in oxygen, the role of oxygen and the role of you know for forming multicellularity. So I was lucky also that this person in particular, I emailed a couple of actually different ones, but I was very lucky that he was also open to the idea to talk to me. Yeah. Because yeah. you can imagine, you know, in the lab here where we are now, yeah. it it would be okay for anyone to say they don't have time to talk mm -hmm. to the geologist. This is, you know, I, uh, right? Because we're so busy to save, or the cancer field is busy to save lives, so it would be perfectly fine to say they don't have time to talk to the geologist. But I was lucky that he said yes to that, and we saw quite immediately that we had common, um, that we both had observations that was that were very important for the other one mm -hmm. for 
for the cancer researcher, for example, he was very interested in animals evolving in a low oxygen world because that we know it was very low. And I was very interested to learn more about his observations on cell differentiation and cell stemness, which my old field has no idea about. Mm. So I immediately saw that this this is a gold mine for me to understand more about Earth evolution. Uh. But 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 it wasn't it wasn't like a very it wasn't a rational, methodic move. It was more driven by frustration, I can say. And it worked, I think that you know. it worked. It worked this time. Sometimes it doesn't work. But I think it, for me at least, it happened several times that I'm driven by frustration into some new, you know, trajectory. Yeah. So maybe it's not always. Um, it's not always bad, but I, I'm more and more aware of it that that you can maybe harvest from frustration in a more conscious way the older you get you know when i was 20 i probably would have reacted a bit in a my frustration maybe made yeah you know two yeah. violent reactions but yeah. now it's, it's, so it's, uh, it's it, which, which is wonderful but yeah. i will i will ask you because you said uh, clinician you said uh, cancer treatment, you said frustration, you said there is, you know, several keywords. So at the mm -hmm. end, I want to ask you such a fundamental question in my point of view for uh, us as a researcher. Do you think mm -hmm. our work on, do you think your particular work is uh, useful? It's a very relevant and good question. And of course, I come from a field where it is not really useful. But I, so I've struggled with that thought before, you know, what's the use of knowing why there is animals on Earth? And if there are animals on other planets, it's no particular uh, use for our daily financial situations or social problems. But I think even that, which is very distant from an application, has a, has a very fundamental importance by providing a perspective on our lives, you know, yeah. it, hum it humbles you to know that we're one player in a very big story, in a very long story. It kind of humbles your decision. I mean, Trump, for example, would never have understood that he's just one player in a long, long line of events. Yeah. And, it, and it will continue for another billion years. So clearly, uh, our impact as people and as one person is very limited. So it and it means also that when you when you when you struck when you're struck by problems, you know, practical practical problems, you can't pay the rent, for example, or you miss the bus or something like that. It's sometimes nice to be able to to relate that to the ice ages, you know. <laughs> or, <laughs> like that, you know, right? It's, it's wonderfully, I mean, I mean, uh, wonderfully seen. I mean, we are just, I mean, we put everything like in a relative point of view. Yeah, exactly. And those help us, right? Those help us to cope. Absolutely. absolutely. Mm -hmm. so, and I think, and I think also with the cancer, of course, when I came into the cancer fi field, now I, I've learned more about how, how nasty and how common it is and that's another observation I think is very useful because everyone outside of the cancer field thinks that the cancer researchers have almost fixed it but that's not the case so and that misses out on a lot of competences and um, energy to solve it from different angles but it also made me think about how maybe you know in as you say in relationship to how how nasty and successful it is as a as a growing multicellularity it's almost as fantastic that it doesn't happen off more often you yeah. know that we can live for so long sometimes without disease is actually more remarkable than i thought yeah before yeah. seeing how, how when how often it goes you know that it can go wrong so often as with cancer so it's it, so in the answer to your what it's useful, I think mostly it's useful for 
my research is useful for providing a historical perspective on our beings, on our, our roles and our lives, which uh, I hope gives other people. Um, I, would say, I would say this definitely matters. Yeah. In the long term, I mean, like in a, this different I mean, people will read and will be interested to your jobs, to your uh, output much better. I think so. I truly believe in this much more to uh, the effect of a, a drug on a cell or on, a, on, on, on something. I mean, this philosophical question remain this, this large question about our lives and our uh, behavior and our uh, future in, in, in a such a large and long context yeah. women and are more important than this is my point of view actually uh, yeah, I agree. than, than, uh, than uh, the effect of a, such a drug or, or component uh, to yeah. uh, to a cell or to a tumor or whatever yes so Emma merci beaucoup it was oh, my pleasure uh, I hope that uh, you will have more success in uh, uh, to response to this fundamental question. <laughs> How yes. You? And uh, hope to see you soon. Yeah. And bye bye. Pour les autres, suivez-nous. Il y aura d'autres invités extraordinaires, another guest with an extraordinary story uh, to tell and to share with us. And uh, see you soon too. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Yeah, we can be heroes Just for one day